Thank you guys, especially Alan. Pretty much every item in TFT has had its moment in the spotlight, but not all were created equally. Some items, oh boy, they were straight up broken and they really made you question whether the rights balancing team was on vacation or just straight trolling. Actually, sometimes it was both. Just so we're clear though, so this will only be craftable items. This list does not contain artifacts or emblems because it's not a fair comparison. So first things first, we'll go with the honorable mentions. These items were insanely strong, but I've decided not to include them in the top list. Why? Because if I did, the entire list would be dominated by set one items. And let's face it, back then it was the Wild West of TFT. And that was when balance was more of a suggestion rather than a guideline. Back in set 1, there was a whole host of tank items that were filthy, and Dragon's Claw is definitely one of them, but Thornmail was like the more aggressive older brother of the two main tank items. Basically, if you've ever played Summoner's Rift and you've played against a Ramus, then you know what it's like to play into a Thornmail, and then you stick it on Braum, and suddenly he's not just a wall, he was a brick house that fought back. His ability mitigated damage and Thornmail reflected all of that damage back at the attacker at almost 100% at a 3 star and Braum became less of a front line and more of a front war. But there was two items in set 1 that were truly beyond broken and that was Morello and Red Buff. These items used to burn for 25% max health true damage while also completely cutting healing. Yes, you heard that right. They didn't just give the enemy a little sunburn, they straight up incinerated them. Nowadays, they're staples, but they're a far cry from their days in set one. But if you're feeling a bit chillier, then Frozen Heart was normally what people would build. Now, this item would be much higher on the list if it wasn't for one tiny detail. It was bugged. Back in set one, there was a build called Double Frozen Heart Pike, and I did that in my set one video. I'm convinced that there is nothing more terrifying than a Double Frozen Heart Pike than waking up in the middle of the night to see your computer installing a Windows update. You didn't even need to play Assassin, just play Pike and you're good to go. And back in the day, if you really wanted to counter Assassins, there was an item called Phantom Dancer, and it didn't just block crits, it straight dodged crits. And if you're playing Rengar, he could get stuck on a Phantom Dancer user and just sit there punching air for the entire fight. Alas, set 2 saw it removed and replaced with Titan's Resolve, which does make a feature by the way. Have you ever wondered what pure frustration feels like? Well, Hush has you covered. This item was a little toxic for two straight sets, until Riot finally removed it and in their infinite wisdom replaced it with something even worse. But more on that later. Initially, Hush was an on hit item that fully silenced champions. Now, Riot eventually toned it down to just preventing mana generation, but let's be honest, that's still absolutely busted. And with units like Volibear, who propped on hits with his ability, you could silence entire teams. But this is not the only silencing effect that features on this list, but for that, you're gonna have to stick around and find out. Swordbreaker is my most hated item of all time. It overstayed its welcome like that one friend who just keeps saying, just one more game, and you're there until three o'clock in the morning wondering what the hell you're doing with your life. That is how this item feels. This item managed to hang around until set four, when it was finally phased out. Up until then, this item was just a must build for every single Metacom. Uh, like Blaster Brawlers in set three, and Sivir in set 2. I for one, I'm really glad it's gone. Now we get to the meat of the video and we're going to kick things off with Locket. Locket of the Iron Solari can seriously f This is one of the most frustrating items in TFT of all time. It was either so weak that it was completely useless and you never built it, or it was so strong that you just couldn't not build it and if you didn't you would lose the game and now we get it as an artifact and the artifact is great but when it first came to the rift it scaled with ap so sorcerer comms got a free ticket to shield town now imagine not just a line of units getting shielded like they do now it was an entire circle kind of like how random wins omen functions but this time with even more shielding when you're playing the sorcerer's comp you got even more damage it was almost as though riot was really daring us to quit tft before the game even and started going and again i'm lowering locket in the ranking because it was in the early sets where it was really bad but it did have a moment in set nine where you played aphelios with twisted fame legends were a mistake 
This one might be slightly a controversial opinion, but I'm putting set five ZZ right here. Why? It was a comp called ZZ Rot Abomination, which basically allowed you to almost spawn infinite ZZ Rots. It was like a never ending clown car of little voidlings. And when you thought you killed them all, there was another one, just like some kind of twisted game of whack-a-mole, but you were always losing. Basically, you could put ZZ Rot on your Abomination unit, and then when they died, they spawned ZZ Rots. And then when the Abomination died, he spawned three more ZZ Rots. It was just impossible to deal with. If you ever wanted to see what pure unbridled power looked like, just look back at set three's Titans Resolve. Back then it scaled multiplicatively, until Riot eventually made it additive. That doesn't mean it did more damage or anything, it just meant that Riot could nerf it without it being confusing. But needless to say, put two of those items on mech, he would stack it to the max and then proceed to destroy every single team that you came across. And then if you got a little bit lucky, hey! You could put a demolitionist spell on Kaiso, and you just straight win the game. This whole process is what caused the me mech no scout meta, and why that is still a meme today. Oh, Luden's Echo, how did it go from being one of the best items ever made to now being an item that if you get it in your artifact shop, you almost never click on? In set one, this item was straight up bonkers, especially when paired with an Akali or Gangplank. You see, Luden's used to scale with AP, a little bit like Locket. So you throw in a low mana unit like Akali, it was like dropping a little bomb into the enemy's backline, and they just didn't even have time to react. But wait, there's more. In set four, Riot thought, mm, hey, Luden's has been underperforming for the last couple of sets. How can we fix that? Oh, what happens if we make it a scale with CC? I mean, it's a great idea. But then you toss it on a Nami or you toss it on a brand and all of a sudden you're snowballing into the next century. I'm pretty sure Vietnam still causes some people PTSD to this day. And then you had Guardian Angel, the item that made death an inconvenience rather than a consequence. There have been very few items in the game as broken as GA, especially in set 4 and set 6. Some interactions were just downright unhealthy, with the most notorious being Ari, Aphelios and Urgot, who would keep casting or attacking even in death. Needless to say, after set 6 and Urgot, Riot decided, hmm, maybe, maybe we don't want to deal with this, and replaced it with what we have now Edge of Night. Where do I even start with Zeke's Herald? Zeke's Herald had one of the craziest metas of all time back in set 9, where you either put this with your Aphidius or you put this with your Garen. I mean, you could put it with almost anything, it was so strong. The tech of this item was completely unreal, turning Garen into a literal Beyblade and Aphelios into a 1v9 monster. And it was so forcible every single goddamn game because Twisted Fate allowed it to be. There was only one thing worse than getting beaten by Zeke's, and that was knowing there was literally nothing you could do to stop it. Now, you remember how I said that there was a silence thing that was going to come up? Here it is. Before Blue Buff, there was another. A better, faster, stronger version. It was called Seraph's Embrace. You might have seen it before, then you might have thought, oh, what the f*** was that? But back in the day, things were a little unhinged. Unlike Blue Buff, which set your mana to 20, Seraph's gave you mana on cast. Now, this might sound innocent enough, but if you were lucky or cursed enough to get a three of these bad boys on a Soraka, you were in for a wild ride. Imagine rapid firing silences at anyone who dared cross your path. Your opponents would just stand there helplessly watching as their units were repeatedly told. In set 9, when Riot finally decided to nerf Zeke's and Locker, they had inadvertently left a power vacuum that the people who played Twisted Fate needed to rectify it. And then all of a sudden, some genius had taken the worst item in the game, which was RFC, and transform it into the best by putting three of them on a kneeler transcending her beyond her mortal limitations, or at least close to what she's like in her lore. The interaction was so absurd that even Riot had to step in with the ban hammer. And 9 and 9.5 quickly earned their place in history as the sets with the most item removals ever. All thanks to Twisted Fate. Now, you might have thought, wow, he still hasn't mentioned Cursed Blade if the set ones are, you know, weighted lower. No, it's because Cursed Blade was just so broken. What made it so strong is the fact that it was RNG based, not over time. What we have now is like, if you ask to attack enough times, you get it. But in set one, it was 20% to do it. So that means with something like, I don't know, Gunslinger, which fired out extra attacks to more enemies, you had a 20% chance of literally making four units get sent to the Shadow Realm. And so basically, and you put it on a Tristana, and Tristana 
Hammer had a 20% chance to send multiple units back to being a lower star unit. And that was on a repeat. It wasn't that you needed 15. If you got really lucky, you could literally send four units to being a zero star in about three auto attacks. And if you had a Runan's Hurricane, which back in my day used to proc on hit effects, suddenly you've got an entire board of helpless little creatures wondering what the fuck just happened. Seriously, if you were on the receiving end of this, you really felt powerless to do anything. And then if you put this on a Vega, Vega's ability at the time would one shot any unit that was a star below him. All of a sudden, if he shrunk a unit, they die. Doesn't matter if they had 10,000 health or not, they just died. And that is why Curse Blade gets my number two spot. But you might be thinking, number two? What is stronger than Curse Blade? Why is this? Well, how can something be stronger than Curse Blade? Well, Curse Blade has come back in some capacity, meaning the concept of it isn't that strong. But there was one item which the concept has been so disgustingly strong, it has never made an appearance in any capacity except for maybe some orphans. And that is Chalice of Harmony. Now, again, you might be thinking, why is it surely Curse Blade is stronger? I mean, probably Curse Blade is stronger, but I think because Curse Blade was in set one when everything was broken, it gets weighted a bit lower. Whereas Chalice came at set three and it was honestly toxic because if you had this with a one star Sona and then you put six star guardians, all of a sudden you couldn't die, you couldn't get out DPS and you couldn't get out heals. And then if you're feeling particularly good, you throw a Velkoz or a Zerath into it, and then hey ho, presto, you've basically got a capped board that cannot be killed and has infinite damage. Velkoz was absolutely filthy with a Sona and one of these. And if you wanted to play, I don't know, Void Brawlers, hey, that worked as well. It didn't matter what you were doing. You just needed a Sona and two of these bad boys and all of a sudden <laughs> you're golden. It was so strong and it elevated specific comps. Star Guardians at the time was almost exclusively a reroll comp, but this item elevated Star Guardians. They didn't need to be three star, you just needed to get this item and then you win. And that was it. I mean, it didn't start off so strong. It did have a patch where it was pretty weak, but then they gave mana to the person casting and then it just took it off. It was kind of like trying to fight a hurricane with an umbrella. And that's why, at least for me, Chalice of Harmony takes the top spot. It was the epitome of broken beyond repair.